Okay, this is a screencast on electron drift and how to derive the electron drift velocity. Okay, so we're going to imagine a um, conducting wire, but we're going to imagine it as a cylinder full of charge carriers. Charge carriers in a conductor are essentially the electrons which move through the conductor. They're jumping from atom to atom. So if we imagine these little electrons inside the conductor, in a conductor with no potential difference, no voltage across it, these electrons are going to be moving around randomly in all different directions. So there is movement of charge within a conductor, even if there's no voltage. But there's no net movement in any one direction because they're all just randomly moving around. Okay. However, if we apply a potential difference across it, then we cause the uh, electrons to move. So if we hook the conductor up to a battery or something like that. The electrons start to what we call drift in a particular direction. So in this case, we're going to say that the electrons are drifting from left to right. And we want to figure out how fast the electrons are drifting because uh, current is a measurement of the rate of flow of charge. So it's a measurement of how, how quickly the charges are moving, essentially, the rate of flow of charge with time. So if we take a little section of this uh, conductor from this point to this point, and we consider all the charges in there that are moving, they're all moving in the same direction um, in a certain amount of time t. So the charges will move through a distance d in that time. How fast are they moving? Well, for now, we're just going to say that they're moving with a velocity v. So we'll give each of them that velocity v. So for any one electron, if we take an electron at some position over here, in a time t, it's going to move with a velocity v through a distance d. So for any one electron, we can say, well, the velocity is the distance divided by time. Therefore, the distance, this distance that it travels, will be equal to v times t. So we can define that. And we say that the charges are moving through a volume V. So the larger the volume of this space, the more charges will be moving. Again, we're talking about current as a rate of flow of charge. So the larger the volume, the more flow of charge you get. And this uh, conducting wire can essentially be thought of as a cylinder. What's the volume of a cylinder? Well, it's the area, which is just a circle, times the distance d. So v is equal to a times d. But we've already said that d equals to v times t. So we're going to say the volume, we're going to use large v for volume, is equal to a v t. And we're using small v here for velocity. So don't get confused between the two v values. Another thing that will determine the amount of current we're getting is the actual number of electrons or charges in this space that are moving through it. So if you have a greater density of charges, you have more overall movement of charge and therefore you have a larger current. So we're going to give that a value, we're going to say n equals the number of electrons per meter cubed. In other words, the number of electrons per unit volume of this conductor. So the total number of electrons, therefore, will equal to n, the number per meter cubed, multiplied by AVT, which is our volume or the number of meters cubed. So the number of electrons per meters cubed multiplied by however many meters cubed we have gives us the total number of electrons that are moving through this section of the conductor. Now if we take the charge on any one of these electrons, we're just going to find that, or define that as Q. So the charge of any one electron is equal to Q. So how much total charge is moving through? Well, how many electrons do we have? We already said that that value is equal to a V T N A V T sorry. Therefore, the total amount of charge moving through this section of the conductor will equal to N A V T times Q. So that gives us the total charge, but current is the rate of flow of charge. It's the amount of charge per unit time. So we take our value for current and we divide it by time. Excuse me, we take our value for charge and we divide it by time. That gives us the current. So our t's cancel and we get that the current uh, in this section of the conductor is equal to NAVQ, where V is the drift velocity. Now I can rearrange this as 
uh, an equation for v, the drift velocity, as i divided by n a q. You can use either of those formulas depending on the scenario, so I'm going to put those in a box. And that's how we derive the electron drift velocity.